they're yours. Hit that one more time. I am, I am the, the number one determinant, number one determinant of, the success of the success or failure. Or failure. Here we go. Of my, of my students. Hey, y'all, you have a strong summer. Kick some butt next year. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. That's the mindset. That's the attitude. Love you guys. And we are live. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to week 135 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. Let me see what we got here this morning. We have Takesha High, Demetrius Scott, my brother. Yolanda McKinney, Janine Wilkins out there in Alaska with my partner that's going to be on here today. Um, Michael Benton, if you missed that broadcast with Michael Benton, scroll back a few videos and check it out. Golf RWT, my man, I like that post you posted yesterday with that, uh, that, that virtual AP Leadership Academy logo. Appreciate that. Rodney Richardson is in the building. Principal Otis Kitchen, my man. The second in the building, my man. Lou Saunders is in the building. Renee Graham, Marsha Poe out there in San Diego. John Herrix is in the building. Jocelyn Nelson. A uh, Angeles Taranjo Rosales is in the building. Lisa Kimball, Anita uh, Wadwa, I believe. I hope I didn't mess, mess that up. Will Lily Lanier is in the building. Alan Coart, Central Hicks, Jasmine Harris, Lakeisha Mabry, is in the building, Lysandra Brackens, Cynthia Farmer, Farmer, my man, Principal Sean Hurt, brought the flames this morning at 10 o'clock. If you've been missing him, which I'm sure you haven't, but if you have, you got to check out Sean Hurt in the morning at 10 o'clock, Facebook Live every Saturday morning right here, right before me at, at 10, and then create and educate immediately before me with the two doctors, Dr. Sheikha Houston and Tammy Taylor. You got to make sure you tune in. Just, uh, just start 10 o'clock. Saturday mornings, take Eastern time, take it to 1230 with me. You know, I'm long winded. We, we go a little bit longer. Right. Uh, we got we got uh, Dr. Roz Gaskins in the building. She's going to be on the platform later in later in 2023. We're looking forward to that. Uniquely you, Cynthia Brewer, Leah Monet Hodges is in the building. Mia Bell Stevens, Rodney Richardson. And by the way, hit the share button as you come in. Hit the retweet button as you come in. Let them know. We're in week number 135. We ain't stopping. I, my, my calendar for this platform is booked all the way to next summer. We ain't we ain't stopping. We ain't stopping. And my list is about five years long in terms of future guests. So, so let them know we're here. Every session is special, too. I mean, they special. We got uh, Josh Tovar in the building under MPA Jaguars. We got Rashad Davis in the building. We got Melissa Jones Chunu, Ale Alexis Lat um, Latour Prudhami. Man, I, I know I messed that up, man. I, you, you know I apologize, though. Uh, we, got, we, got one, we got the doctor in the building, Principal Tammy Taylor. We got Cora Graves. We got Carlos Baggage, Principal Baggage. He going to be on with me soon. I think it's this month. We got Carlos Baggage coming on. I got, got he's coming on. We, we got we got another new principal in the building that's going to be on with us. We're going to have the three of us on. Great conversation to end out the year, but we'll talk more about that. We got Bev Hill uh, in the building. Liesa Jordet in the building. Lisa B. Woods Herman is in the building. Um, Sherilyn McCroy Heard out there in Hampton, Virginia. We got the other doctor here, Dr. Sheikha Houston in the building. We got Cammie Berry in the building. We got my wife, the queen. She got a birthday coming up, y'all, too. But not yet. So, But it's coming. It's coming. Right? Kimberly Broughton, Kefele. In fact, we getting ready to take a vacation, man. But I'll be here next Saturday. Right? We got, we got, what we got? Where we got Bev Hill in the building. Nyerka Coy Bush. Deborah Jenkins. Stacy Mabry, she's gonna be on the platform soon, man. That's gonna be fiery, 
right? We got Principal Dot McKeever Jeter in the building. If you missed her interview, scroll back. If you missed Josh Tovar, MP Jaguar, scroll back. Check it out. Kathy Walker's in the building. What time is it? 11 o'clock. We can ready to get started. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 my goodness. Hold up. Hold hold, hold. Time out, y'all. Time out. Time out. We got Amanda Quinichet. Now, y'all don't know who that is. Time out. I got to stop. As my as my guy out here in Jersey, uh, Tony Motley says, I got to stop for royalty, man. <laughs> Amanda Quinn. Amanda! Oh, man. Listen, Amanda. I'm on live here and I'm talking, I'm like, like, like I'm talking to you. I'm talking, I'm talking to you like like ain't nobody else listening. Hey, hey, Amanda, this is my former student, y'all. She was my student in grade six, seven, and eight. She is now a teacher. Y'all hear me? She's a teacher. She's doing big things. And she stopped by the virtual AP Leadership Academy, Amanda Quinichet. But I got to get on you real quick. You haven't been staying in touch like you used to. So let's get reconnected so you can tell me what's happening with your school and all that, man. So Amanda, hit me up. Always good when the former students check in. Let me, let me holler at somebody out there. When the former students check into your podcast, your live stream, read your blog, or your web, what what your website, whatever it is, or just reach out to you on social media. That means you must have been doing something right. Why are they gonna reach out to you and they hate you, right? Like like they feel you did them dirty, right? Why why, why are they gonna reach out to you? But when they know, man, you you, you did you encouraged me, you inspired me some kind of way. They gonna be there. Good to see you, Amanda. You made my day. We got we got we got Johnny Cruz Craig in the back. I ain't seen you in a while. What, what y'all y'all coming up because it's Thanksgiving weekend? So I'm seeing all these names I don't normally see. Dr. Craig said, don't be calling me out like that, right? <laughs> hey, hey, let me get two more names here. We got Professor Sherrod Lamont Laws and Casey Washington. Oh, there's Valanda Jones out there in Texas. I gotta shout you out. Oh, I see Danielle Capehart out there in Alabama. Good to see you, Principal. And then we got September Daniels. Let me, let me, let me, man, I'm seeing all these, these names that I don't normally see. I see the boss educator in the building out there in Mississippi. She's going to be my guest too coming up, right? So we got, we got folks, man, let me stop y'all. I read these names all day. Hey y'all, hit the share button, hit the retweet button. Let me formally greet you all by saying good morning. Greetings. Welcome to week one. 135 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy, which I also call the Saturday Academy with a capital T-H-E, the Saturday Academy. And I don't know about you, man. I say that every week. I don't know, but I think I know. But if I can just speak for me real quick, you know, I got to speak for me. I'm not going solo today. I got I got royalty sitting in the wings, man. So if I could just speak for me for a second, I'm on fire. Woo! Yes. Ha! That, ha! That's how I'm feeling, man. Yo. I'm getting ready to get on a cruise ship tomorrow. <laughs> you, know, you know how I'm feeling, man. It might be cold right now, but after we on that ship for a few hours, I'm going to be putting on some shorts. So, you know, I'm feeling good, man. You know, the week was good. Talking to the last audiences I spoke to. Matter of fact, y'all y'all hear me for a second. I spoke at the Learning and the Brain Conference last Sunday. I spoke at the, um, where did I speak? At, 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 at the 100 Black Men of, of the Houston, Metropolitan Houston Conference last Saturday. After I spoke on here um, last Saturday, right? So did that in the, did us in the morning and then the conference. But that learning in the brain, man, hear me somebody. They saw a fit to bring me to a conference on the brain. Man, that elevated my self-esteem. <laughs> they, they saw fit to bring me the keynote, closing keynote 
a conference on the brain, man. And 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 I'm gonna share this with you. Someone sent me an email and they said, Kafele, they said, we learned all this technical aspects of the brain and learning and so forth. They said, but you were the closing keynote, and, and the person said, You humanized everything we learned. You humanized it. And I said, Bam. There it is, because that's that's what I bring, man. I just try to humanize things, which is inclusive of this broadcast. We're just trying to take the information and make it human and applicable and relevant. That's why I get up every Saturday early, man. Y'all see the Facebook and Twitter posts up early, on fire, and ready. I mean, I, I type those at 7. I don't come on here till 11. I'm up early, ready to go. Hey y'all, let me let me let me let me do my quick uh my quick commentary. Matter of fact, let's just use that as the commentary because I got a lot of things to ask my guests. The commentary was, and and I let, let me just give it a title. Then the commentary was, you might think you know your lane. Now I'm in real time on this one now, so if it don't come out right, don't don't fault me. You might think you know your lane, but somebody might show you. You got another lane, see? I, that, that's like on the spot thinking. You might think you know your lane, but somebody might come along and say, nah, you got another lane. That That's that learning in the brain conference. What, 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 what Principal Cafele doing at keynoting the learning in the brain conference, right? <laughs> but they showed me, nah, that, that work. Your message works in the conference with the brain people. So I'm saying to you, somebody, I know I'd be the first one to talk about stay in your lane. That's what I do. But I'm saying to you, sometimes you might be limiting yourself and there might be another lane for you that you ain't even explored yet. You don't even know about it yet. And then so you don't venture into it. Look, look at the Holy Spirit taking me somewhere I hadn't planned to go. So, so you don't even venture to go into that lane. But then somebody that you don't even know see something in you. You don't even know you got. Do you hear me? And now you wind up in this place with these people whose information is very different from yours. But you come in there and you wow them nevertheless. Stand in ovation, man. Man, this wasn't planned, man. Sometimes I got to go with the Holy Spirit, man. So, so I'm saying to you, don't limit yourself. Because when you think you're in the right place, it might be somewhere else you need to excel. A whole different genre of people that need to hear your message, that need to see your thunder, that need to feel your fire. So make sure that you don't put yourself in a box. You heard Jonathan Kegler last week. He didn't say step outside the box. He said burn the D thing down. I won't use the word, right? Jonathan Keckler said, no, forget about outside of the box thinking. Jonathan Keckler said, burn the box. So I'm saying to you, I'm reinforcing what he said. You might have to burn that box, baby. Man, let me, I got, I, this ain't solo month Saturday. Let me, let me, let me, let me step off, man. I'm sweating, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, to the to the first time is out here. Welcome. Hit that share button. Let them know, yo, this is my first time, but this dude got energy. And this 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 dude. But wait till you hear my guests, right? This this dude got energy, right? So hit let let somebody else know. Let somebody else know. So real quick, y'all. You know, I got a plug. These are the two books I wrote for this platform. I mean, I wrote them before the platform, but that, that's what they for, right? So the Assistant Principal 50 and the Aspiring Principal 50, just go to Amazon on your other device, give yourself a holiday gift and get yourself a copy. If you already got them, get them for somebody else that may need them. And then the Equity and Social Justice Education 50, that's my newest one. And then I ain't got time to be showing you all the other stuff. Right. And I was thinking about how I got loud. My, my mother's on here live. She don't like when I get loud like that. It's, it makes her nervous. 
that that clip I show in the beginning, she don't even watch it, man. She waits till that's over, and then she turns it on. She said, "I can't watch that. I get nervous, man. Like you're gonna hurt yourself, right?" So, so here we go, y'all. Um, I'm rocking the St. Louis Stars, Negro Leagues, Black Baseball, always. I feel like Superman when I put these things on, man. I just or I got a closet of 50. And last night I said to my wife, I said, man, I, it's it's one one of them jerseys that got my name on it, man. They got a 20 percent off sale. I said one of these jerseys got my name. I said, I ain't going to order that. I ain't got no more room in the closet. And then about midnight last night, I went and ordered that jersey because <laughs> I feel like Superman when I put them on, man. You know, so let's go, y'all. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. Man, I got a guest here. We're going to talk about how we met and all that in a little while. But I, let, let, let me bring her up here. Man, I got I got the Alaska <laughs> Secondary Schools Principal of the Year, right? Right here in the building. I got Mary Teresa Fulp in the building. Hey, Doc. You know, I call people Doc when they don't even have the doctor. That's what I think. <laughs> hey, 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 Doc. How you doing today? I am so excited to be here with you today. I, as you were introducing yourself, um, I just like, like my spirit started jumping. I'm like, I am ready to go to do this today with you. And you actually wrote the aspiring principal 50. No, um, the assistant principal 50. You were writing it in Alaska in your hotel room the last um, time you were in Alaska. So I was just remembering that as you brought that up. Yeah, that's, you know, you're right. I forgot all about that. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, let, let me holler at somebody in this audience. I'm out in Alaska to speak to the principals out there. But in that hotel, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to waste time writing, watching television and all that. If I've got something, to, some, some project I'm working on, we'll get it done wherever I am. Airplane, hotel room, gate, whatever it is. That's how we do it. Hey, Principal, uh, Principal Fulp, let me let me read the bio and let them know who's here. Okay. And just as you're, you know, looking, I, I love the, the virtual background, the heart of a leader, be fiercely authentic. So right at the start of your, your bio, it says fiercely authentic, the heart of a leader. Principal Mary Fulp is a long, lifelong Alaskan who has spent 25 years working in education throughout the state. She works hard to ensure that every student feels valued and seen. She has been an advocate for education throughout her career, serving as a past as past presidents of the Alaska Council of School Administrators and the Alaska Association of Secondary School Principals. She is currently a high school principal and a principal mentor for the Alaska School Leadership Academy. She is a mother, daughter, educator, and author, as well as the 2022 Alaska Principal of the Year. Her middle name is Teresa, named after Mother Teresa, who inspires her to live her life in service to others. And then she has a quote here, which I want to read. Let no one ever come to you without leaving better and happier. Be the living expression of God's kindness, kindness in your face, kindness in your eyes, kindness in your smile, Mother Teresa. So great stuff. And, you know, obviously you're doing a, a, a ton of work. And, and I'm always happy when folks send me the abbreviated version of the, the bio, because I know that you could fill up some pages with all of your accomplishments. So um, I appreciate that. But they're going to hear more about you. Hey, folks, before I get started, hit the share button, hit the retweet button. Let them know we're here and we're ready to go. So, um, Principal Folk, as an educator, as I ask all my guests, who is Principal Mary Teresa Folk? Oh, who am I? I am someone who loves people. Um, I would say that I'm a humanitarian. I am here to live my legacy as I do the work that I've been called to do. I believe that every person has a gift and it's my job to um, help them find it nurture it and grow it, especially our students that we serve. I am someone who is very much um, in line with who I am to the center of my being in the way that I serve others. Um, 
I believe that I'm at my best when I come from this centered and true place of who I was created to be mm -hmm. and, and walk that out well in this world. So who I am, I am my mother's daughter. I am my father's daughter. I believe my mother is on to this morning as well. Um, I love it that both of our mothers are on. Um, she, she's definitely part of why, a huge part of why I'm in education. And, and, and let me say hello to your mother because I, I, you know, we met. So it, it's the same last name? Yes. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Fault. Good to see you virtually. Been a while since we've seen each other. You know, before I, before I move on, I want to stay with where you are with, with, with the response you gave. You said this centered place of where you were created to be. How, how'd you find your centered place? Because a lot of a lot of us don't ever find that. How'd you find yours? Well, um, it's been a journey, and I I I find that when we ask ourselves tough questions, and um, one of the things that I've done with staff is this mirror, this mirror that you talk about. Um, we need to reflect on who we are, and really get to the heart of what is my motive with what I'm choosing to do right now. And I've put that mirror, if, if anyone wants to know how to really have a, a staff meeting, you can have a staff meeting, the best staff meetings for the rest of your career. If you take Principal Caffelli's books and just jot down some questions, put the mirrors on the table around the, the room and just have staff reflect on those questions and talk about those questions with each other it's all right there. You can have an ongoing, um, already prepared staff meeting for the rest of your career if, and, and get people to grow and to look within to find out who, who they truly are. Because what we need is people to show up authentically and who they were called to be in order for us to be at our best to serve our students well and to really shift public education fiercely to the positive um, so that we can we can get people to believe in our profession again. Um, it's going to take us to, to come together and do this work in our most centered and authentic place of who we are. Um, you have to be accountable to you and you have to like really look within. And that's what I've done to be at that centered place of who I am. I, I've studied great leaders. Um, I study um, great leaders who are currently alive, like Principal Caffelli. I've studied Martin Luther King Jr., um, different people who are no longer with us. What is it about those great leaders that that we that makes them different? What is it about them? And they are centered and true to their highest purpose. They're not perfect because we're in based on being human, we're not perfect in who we are. We're human beings and, and being human is a, a messy experience sometimes. But if we are constantly um, aligning and, and recalibrating and check and uh, holding ourselves accountable, um, boy, we can we can really operate from that that purpose that we were created. And, and I tell people all the time, there is only one of me and that is my superpower. There is only one of you and that is your superpower. We need to be operating within our superpowers in order to make this um, big difference in in the way in what we do. You're making it hard for me to get to question number two, man. Because <laughs> because you said operating within our superpower. Hey, somebody out there, Mary, Principal Fulp is saying you got to operate within your superpower. I told you when I put these shirts on, I, I feel like I got that superpower. So I'm, I'm linking my 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 contemporary authenticity to historical tradition, yes. right? Historical foundation, and it's making me that much stronger. I'm just asking somebody the question: Are you operating within your superpower, particularly when times are rough? Yes. Whew. Hey, Mary, um, you're, you're, I've, I've, I've known you for a few years now and you're brilliant. And everybody around you knows that you could you could have done anything that you wanted to do with your life, but you chose education. Why education? 
And after all these years, past 25 years, what continues to fuel your passion for the work that you do? Well, I tried to avoid education at all costs. That's This is my mother. Um, she is really good about um, speaking what she would like for us to do into our lives, <laughs> including her grandchildren, which we absolutely, I love it because it's where I'm supposed to be. Um, but she told me when I was in high school, like, you should, you should become a teacher. And I said, Mom, I do not want to spend the rest of my life in a classroom, in a school. I just graduated. I want to get out of a school. And um, I went to college. I was studying psychology. I ended up um, going outside of my family values, getting pregnant in college. I went back home and I was a single mom at the time, which you've met my son, Damien. Oh my gosh. He's almost 27 now. Wow. And, and what's so exciting is he's home to get his master's in teaching. Yay. I'm so excited. I love the profession so much. So, um, but, but all the way that a long time ago, when I was in this place where I was searching for what I needed to do, um, I just was redirected to the path for me. And I, I believe that happens to us in life. If we're off course, we get redirected sometimes and it's painful. It's a painful process of getting redirected to our purpose. Um, but I was in Kodiak as a single mom back at home with my parents, um, you know, feeling like I, you know, feeling ashamed of who I was and embarrassed about the choices I made to land me in a place to be living outside of our family values where I was a single mom. Um, and, but I wouldn't change any of that because I went to the college and I, and I told the college professor, sometimes people speak the right words to you at the right time. And yes. the college um, advisor was doing my credits. And I said, how much longer is it going to take for me to become a teacher? Because at the time I was, I was working at the bank for $7 an hour and every 30 days or 90 days, I'd get a 10 cent raise if my performance was good. That's pretty much aging me for sure. Because um, <laughs> that was minimum wage at the time when I was a single mom. I was 22 years old. And she said, she did the calculation and she said, Mary, it's going to take you two more years to get your degree to become a teacher. And you're going to have to leave um, Kodiak to do so. You're going to have to leave home get up, take your son and go to Anchorage to get your degree. And I said, Nope, I don't want to do that. Um, two more years. That's too long. Uh, I don't want to leave home. Like my family was my security. I wasn't ready for that. And she said, Mary, two years is going to go by whether you like it or not. You can either have your teaching degree and be able to provide for your son, or you can be here doing what you're doing now and not able to be the mother that your son needs you to be. So Ding, 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 ding. I decided I was going to become a teacher. I moved to Anchorage, broke my mom's heart because she wasn't around my son. My dad's my dad's um, around too. Like her, my mom and dad have been married for over 50 years. Wow. I love my parents and, and the foundation that they've provided me. Um, we actually just spent the night with them the other night for Thanksgiving and, and had a sleepover with all the grandkids. And yeah, so um, that's how I got back in to education and on the right path was um, just being on the wrong path and then quickly redirected to this is what you need to do to be who you were called to be, but also to be the mother that your son needs you to be. Wow. Wow. And it's, you know, I'm reading some of the comments as you speak and, and there are others who tried to avoid it. And my mom is on here and, and knows I didn't want to be an educator. <laughs> she knows better than anybody. That this is not the path that I wanted for myself, but here, here I am. You know, Mary, you um, so you went on and became a teacher, but ultimately you became a principal. And you certainly, you know, be, being, you know, just the accomplishments you've made over the years, not just the te the principal of the year award, but just <clears throat> done over the years. You know, there's a lot of doors that are open for you if you choose to walk through them. But you have made a decision up to this point in your professional life to be in the school as a principal. So my question to you is why the principalship and, and what is it that you felt that you could accomplish as a principal that you couldn't necessarily accomplish as a classroom teacher? Well, um, this goes back to being fiercely authentic when I was first. So I got my first teaching job and I was still a single mom and it was up in um, North Kotzebue, Alaska which is above the Arctic Circle. And there I am in this really, really cold place with my son and, and I'm, I have my first teaching job. And 
I didn't know the politics of education at the time and, and that I couldn't always speak my, my truth in the way that I, my unfiltered truth. But I, but I think that I wouldn't change that even because I was such an advocate for students. Um, there was a principal that um, was new to the area, had never been in Alaska. She came from California and there was a big disconnect with um, the culture and the principal at the time. And, um, and the students felt safe, trust, they felt safe with me. Um, and I, I believe it comes back to being authentic. They know if you're real, they know if you're genuine, they know if you care and if you see them. And so I'm this new teacher just out there trying to do the best I can with my son and it's cold and I love Alaska. I was born and raised in Alaska, but every place that I've gone to in Alaska is completely different. It's like a bunch of different countries within one state is what it feels like. So I'm up there in Alaska and um, I do this unit um, of we're, we're, we're learning about um, all of these stories that we're reading. I'm a language arts teacher. They all have this theme, um, lean on me. That was the theme of the unit of study. And my students, one of my students said, Miss Fulk, do you know that there's a song called Lean On Me? Mm. And I was like, yes, I love that song. And so he said, I'm going to bring it in. My dad has it. So he brought the song in. That was back before we could just automatically connect to our devices and have the song. He brought the song in. We, the students started to sing the song and learn the lyrics. In the hallways, they were singing the song as they were going into passing period. Um, some of the teachers were annoyed that they were causing so much noise and such a disruption. And um, and then at the end of the year, um, this after after three years of being with this group, I decided to leave because I was I was not appreciated. Um, I was seen as a threat by the administrator at the time who felt that um, these kids trusted me. So therefore, I must be there must be something about me that that isn't right as a teacher. I don't I don't know what it was. There were a lot of politics at that time. And and so I, I just um, ended up saying I'm going to move to a different community where I'm valued. I don't I don't need the union to back me on this. I just know that I deserve to be treated well. And and I'm going to um, leave at the end of this year and go to a different community. And and before I left, I went to the soup, the assistant superintendent and I didn't bring the union with me because I was like, I don't want to be backed by a union. I just know what I deserve. And I didn't believe what the union was doing in that district at the time. They were um, really grouping up and, and trying to keep you know, things mediocre and come and in a place that wasn't best for kids. It wasn't a spirit of excellence that I want. And so I what didn't want to be a part of it because I always wanted to do what was absolutely best for kids at all times, not what was best for the adults, but what was truly best for the kids that we serve. So I went to the assistant superintendent who happens to be the governor of Alaska right now. Um, but at the time he was my assistant superintendent. And I said, I'm leaving and I'm leaving because of how I'm treated. And the best teachers need to be treated better here. And so I just really, you know, put myself on the line and said, I'm out of here. I love this place, but it's time to go because teachers need to be treated better, especially your best teachers. And so that's why I became a principal. I saw the power of leadership when used wrong. And I was determined to be the leader that was going to, going to support the best of the best and really grow the, teach, the teachers across the state of Alaska to stepping up and moving from complacency into greatness. I believe that I'm an irritant for mediocrity mm. and I am here to really you know, poke people who think that complacency and mediocrity is at all going to breed in our schools. Our students, our families, our profession deserves our very best. We're working with people, not products. We've got to bring our best every day. And, uh, what a what a powerful statement! But let's let's go to that last thing you just said. I'm an irritant for mediocrity. Hmm. You know, sometimes when 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 I got folks on here and they say something that that really resonates with me, I feel a need to repeat it, and 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 that's that's what I'm doing here. 
I'm thinking about the folks in this audience who are in various different capacities, assistant principals, aspiring administrators, principals, um, central office, you know, and so forth. And then folks who are not even in education, but enjoy the platform. Well, let's go back to that term. An irritant for me, mediocrity. Hey, somebody, how about you? Are you an irritant for mediocrity? Whether it be somebody external to you or yourself. Because we if, if, if we're mediocre, we got to recognize that. And then you do you become irritant of that mediocrity within yourself? It's a powerful statement. I wrote it down because I'm a I'm gonna keep it close to the <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, 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 Mary, let's 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 get into the heart of this talk. You know, you you are the the Alaska Secondary Schools Principal of the Year. That's under National Association of Secondary School Principals, an organization that I most dearly love being a part of as a presenter. You, you know, but I'm thinking about, you know, life is interesting. And as I mentioned last week, when I was when I was um, promoing that you were coming on, I remember vividly when I first and I don't want to say met you. I remember meeting you, but I remember first encountering you. Right. Because, you know, I was doing a breakout session and you were in the room and you were quite vocal. Uh, uh, you, mm -hmm. Do you remember that? You, you, I mean, yes. you, you, you were cheering me on, man. And, and, you know, as, cause you, you speak and, you know, as a speaker, that's who we're looking for in the room. You know, that, that one that, that, that affirms us. And that's mm -hmm. what gives us that, 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 that fuel, that energy to keep going, to take it to another level. So I felt mm -hmm. blessed that day that you were in the room, you know, um, and I was still, you know, as I, as, as, as I, put this question together, which I will get to, I promise. But just, <laughs> you know, just thinking about, I was recently, I, I hate using the word retired, but I did retire, but I had recently transitioned out of my high school. And I was, I was out here in this uncharted water of trying to survive being a self-employed speaker that didn't quite have the name recognition that I grew into having. So here I was in that situation, but here you were, you weren't where you are now. You were in a good place, obviously, as a principal. And, and, and I think you were at that time the president of the Alaska uh, mm -hmm. Secondary Principals Association. So you were in a good place. But 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 you and I have come so far from where we were back in like 12, 13, whatever year that was that we first met one another. And then you ultimately brought me to Anchorage. So so with that, to talk about how you got to where you are could probably take 24 hours because it is. Mm -hmm. So much to break down but what i do want to ask you what i want to what i want to talk about is i want you to talk about the mindset i want y'all want y'all in the audience to hear this well the mindset the drive the determination that toward getting you to the level that you find yourself now and particularly as alaska secondary school principal of the year what what is that mindset to get to that point? What is that drive? What is that determination? You know, um, I've always been optimistic. I really um, pay attention to what I'm thinking about, what we think about, we bring about. Um, I am a person who reflects and and really just is. I, I think I'm harder on myself. Um, because I just have such a high standard of, of this work being so important. It's life changing work. Those students that I talked to you about, you know, back, I used to think, Oh, I'm so much better now than I was then. But, but really I think what landed me the Alaska principal of the year um, honor is it goes back to my first years. It goes back to my beginnings as an educator. Those students, when I left their eighth grade year, they sang, they paused the program um, during their promotion ceremony and sang Lean On Me to me. Mm -hmm. um, and people didn't know at the time what that was about. They didn't know that it was about their their unit of study, about all these stories, the Diary of Anne Frank that we, that we read. Um, and then we turned off the lights in the classroom and were quiet and then pretended like the people in the hallway were the soldiers. Like, how does that feel? Like bringing learning to life in every moment. And so 
they sang to me at promotion and it was like, oh, this is so hard to leave these children who I love. But in my first years, I was authentic in who I am. I was true to giving my best, even though sometimes my best was, um, you know, misguided, you know, because of the, my, just my lack of just being young. Um, but even in that, it, it worked out because I was just coming from that pure hearted place. I say the heart of a leader, the heart of a leader matters. Um, they flew me back their 12th grade year to be their graduation speaker. Wow. They, it, it, it's amazing what happens. Like to me, those are my biggest awards is when the students fly you back to be your, the graduation speaker. Yeah. That's happened to me twice. I taught for a very short amount of time, four years. And then I went right into leadership because that what was, is what was needed. But both of the groups flew me back. One was my middle school group and one I had taught in fourth grade. And I thought I am a terrible fourth grade teacher. They are too young. They cry too much and they have, you know, boogers. <laughs> like, I just was like, I can't do this. I like the older kids who can clean, clean that part up themselves. But they even, you know, felt such a connection to who I was as their teacher that their 12th grade year, they flew me back to be their graduation speaker. So even when I thought I wasn't good, even when I thought I wasn't making that significant difference, um, if we go into the day every day, and I go into the day every day now with very, very, very intentionally. And I, and I say the first thing I want to do as I walk into that building is um, give me the courage, Lord, to be where I need to be and do the courageous work you need me to do. I am here to show up. I can't do everything, but I can do something. And the something I can do, I will do. It's like, put me in coach. I'm ready to go. But I have to have that mindset every single day. Every day, because every day I'm placed in opportunities to make a positive difference, a life changing positive difference in the lives of my students, but also in the lives of the adults that I that I work with. We are here to show up and and in being our most authentic, um, amazing person self that we can be, we give others permission to do the same. I don't want to work with a bunch of people who are just like me. I want to be with people who are diverse. There's so much beauty and diversity in who we are. And it's like, why are you here? Why are you here? Let's get to the root of why we're here and, and operate from that centered place so that the noise does not distract us. There's so much noise. <laughs> let, we cannot let the noise distract us or we will be off mission quickly. You all, you, all, you, you know, every time you get to the end of your statement, you drop something, man. <laughs> you drop something at the end every time. Do not let the noise distract us. Wait a minute. Listen, I, I, I got to get my camera on this one. <laughs> it's somebody on here, whether it be live right now or it was watch the video later on. You know who you are. And you are allowing the noise to distract you. You know who you are. If you're on here right now, just say ouch, right? You let it's 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 always gonna be outside mm -hmm. noise. You knew that before you took the position, but you're gonna let the noise distract you. Now I know it's human nature. I got distracted by the noise, mm -hmm. but somewhere along the way, I figured this thing out. So even in real time, the work I do now, I is noise out there i mm -hmm. hear it but it ain't distracting me <laughs> I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be my i'm gonna be fiercely authentic you, you do you hear me mm -hmm. <laughs> let's go hey, hey 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 check this out to the audience now you know these topics every week i create them every week i create my topic and then I and then and then I you know went, go on and create whatever the questions will be to support the topic. But something different happened this week. <laughs> <laughs> something different happened this week, y'all. Last Sunday, <laughs> Mary wrote me and said, "Do you have a topic?" I'm like, "Not yet, right?" Because it was just Sunday, right? She said, "Well, I got one." I said, "Oh, <laughs> what, what is it?" She said, "The heart of a leader." She said, can that be our topic? 
I said, let's do it. Now, 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 my mother and I had this long talk this week. She on here now, she knows. And this came up in our conversation. I said, Ma, it's, it's, you know, it, it's so good that my seniors in, uh, in my last year, my last two years of my principalship would write a topic on my whiteboard for me to do my morning message. And then I would just read it, look at the one liner topic and then run with it. So I had that, I, I, I had that development. So when it gets to a point now, Mary says the heart of a leader. Now I got, okay, what am I going to write? Right. But I got it. Y'all. There go my mother. She wrote out <laughs> Dolores. Mm -hmm. Right. So, 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 so here we go. Hey, Mary, you're passionate about that title. The heart of a leader. Right. And you, and, and you put fiercely authentic. So, I want to ask you first and foremost before we get before we go deep into it. What do you mean when you say the heart of a leader? Well, <clears throat> I see I think the things that frustrate us or um you know as Miles Monroe said, um the things that that make us angry we were born to solve. And um there are some things that really make me angry and it's when leaders um are in a position of power and they um, do, they use their influence in the wrong way and in a mean spirited way, in a, in a, in a hurtful way. And so the heart of a leader, I'm, I'm always looking at, um, I've been burned by people too, who I thought were, were coming from a good place, but they were manipulative and, um, coming, you know, just kind of going after people. And so it really matters to me that we have the strength of our country you know, depends on the leadership integrity of the people who are in positions of power to be pure of heart and to be operating from a selfless place of really providing um, as much as they can into pouring into others in a way that that everyone then can can step into that better version of themselves that we so desperately need in our schools, in our communities, in our country. And I am so blown away still, even though I know it's coming, because expect opposition every time you're influencing positive change. You just need to expect it. I mean, I heard something recently that even a, even a dead fish can, can float downstream. But you got to be alive and on fire and passionate in order to go against the current to create meaningful, uh, sustainable change. And that's what we have to do in education today. We have to fight the good fight and go against the current that is going in the wrong direction. We can't feed into all of the things that we are not. We need to show all of the things that we are. We are. And if we say that we really care about public education and the best of us need to stay in public public education when the time is hard. I believe I was born for a time as this, as long as I don't get distracted by the noise. Mm -hmm. I was in a leadership um, training one time and I love this. This was my most liberating moment. So I hope this is something for you guys too. That I, I was doing something in my behavior that was minimizing myself. So I would say something, but I know that I talk a lot and I know my gift, I have a gift of speaking. <laughs> and so I was speaking again. And sometimes I need to just stop and listen. I'm learning that. And I'm, I'm doing a good job with that lately because I'm growing. We're always growing. But the, the trainer yelled at me in front of 50 people in the workshop. And most of them were teachers that were currently working underneath my leadership. Mm -hmm. And so you can only imagine how, how the room environment. He goes, he goes, Mary. Stop apologizing for the great gift you are to education. At some point in your life, some nut has tried to trim you back from being the gift that we so desperately need. He goes, there are people in this room that hate you right now. You just don't know it. They might as well hate the real you. Get out of your way and give your full self to this profession without apologizing. And I was like, whoa, okay, I will do that. And so the moment, that's why I say be fiercely authentic. Yeah. The moment that we really level it up to be who we truly are called to be 
and we are passionate about what we're called to do and we get in and we like have that energy, it is electrifying. It lights up a room. I don't even have to speak and my presence speaks loudly in the space that I'm in when I'm in that centered, authentic place. So I'm telling you, every one of us has been created for a purpose. We need to find out what that purpose is and step into it without apologizing. Step into it in a fiercely bold, passionate way and own who we are. That's that, you know, that's 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 powerful. It's, it's there's a part of me that just wants to stay there for the rest of our conversation. But 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 you know something. As 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 I'm processing your words, I'm thinking about how I had to grow to be who you're talking about. Mm. That wasn't you know, I, I know who and what I am now, but I also know who and what I used to be. Yeah. And I know that there was a time I had to please others. I, so I thought uh, yeah. there was a time I had to conform to others expectations. So I thought, but I got to a point in my life and, and, and I'll say this, it's inclusive of the way I conduct myself on this platform that, mm -hmm. that I said, you know, something, I, I'm just going to be me. Yeah. And, 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 and there's a possibility that I have lost some viewers for being me. Right. But there's also a possibility I gain viewers for being me. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so that authenticity that you authenticity that you speak of and particularly fiercely mm -hmm. so, so matters. So I'm, I'm, I'm just repeating what you said because I'm so excited about what you're saying. Right. But 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 let's let's keep going. I know you said this, but I, I still want to throw the question at you in isolation. Why does the heart of a leader matter? You know, um, it, it just does. Um, what is, that's a big question. Um, I look at leadership and, and I, it's so hard for me to watch people who have an incredibly big following um, spew hurtful words, um, speak, you know, like to me, if here's, here's my belief about leaders. Like if I was so excited about politics, which I'm not, but if I was, it would be because there was a candidate who I could count on was impeccable with their word who operated from the heart of who they are and the heart, their heart was pure and noble and honorable and, and, you know, just, and all of those things that, that we hope to be around that we could trust the leader. And when I watch leaders who like, why don't we promote what we love instead of bashing what we hate? Why do we have to go after someone in a way that minimizes who they are just because they're different? Like I've gotten to this place where I don't have the same beliefs as other people, but my beliefs are my beliefs and I'm going to be true to my beliefs. And, and my beliefs are that every human being deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. Even if myself as a leader, I have have reason to terminate an employee. I can do that and speak the truth with kindness. If I'm a good leader and I'm acting with integrity based on who I am, I don't need to behave differently. I need to be true and centered in who I am, which is a loving, compassionate um, leader who really values the work we do. And it's too important that we, that we do have to hold each uh, people accountable to, um, to, to perpetuating patterns of love and growth instead of perpetuating patterns of hurt and hate and ignorance. Like it's important that we, we are courageous about leading well, but the heart of a leader is everything to me. I have witnessed too many leaders who do not act with integrity, who do not have um, a pure heart in, in the work that they do, and they are influencing 
um, our communities to be more divisive, more hurtful, more um, all of the things that I don't want to see. The heart of a leader is a, is someone who unifies and brings people together, and you can count on them to speak the truth and then walk it out. You can see people who are true leaders who act with integrity. They walk their values out consistently every day. You can count on how they behave because their words align with their actions. That's what I'd love to see more of is a leader who really gets to that next level who makes everyone around them better because they are living well. They are living well. And, and, and what resonated with this thread, promote what you love, mm -hmm. right? Not what you hate, you know? That, that's, that's, that's just good stuff, good stuff. Let's keep going. Heart of the leader, heart of a leader. When, when I, you know, when, when, when you first gave me that term, that phrase, um, and I started processing it. I thought about it in a lot of different ways, you know, as I'm putting my questions together and, and just me just pondering over what that what that could possibly mean. And one of the things that I thought about, Mary, was that person when I've got that heart of a leader, that person that wants success for staff and students badly. Right. Mm -hmm. Badly. Like, like, like my buddies, uh, Dr. Sheikha Hughes, <laughs> Dr. Tammy Taylor, they, they've showed a video this morning of, of uh, Eric Thomas, motivational speaker known as E.T. And, and his question for, for eons now has, has always been, how badly do you want it? Mm. And, and then he answers the question. He says, you've got to you've got to want it so bad um, that how's he word that thing as bad as you want to breathe. Right. Mm. And. I'm saying I'm so I'm thinking about a heart of a leader in isolation from conversation from you prior to wanting success for staff, for students badly. But yeah. then I thought about but then I added something to it. And this is where I want you to come in. In order for staff to want it as badly as you do as leader, as I do as leader, in order for students to be, to, to want it as badly as I do as badly as you do as leader, students and staff have to believe in our leadership. Mm -hmm. They have to believe in our vision. And if they don't believe in our leadership, believe in our vision, then how are they going to want it as badly as we do? So, mm -hmm. so my question to you for this great audience that we have out here, how does a leader go about getting staff to believe in staff and students, but let me let me kind of isolate it to staff. How how do how does a leader go about getting staff to believe in his or her leadership and his or her vision? So, um, in sequence theory, um, it, it it talks about first seen or heard is best remembered, and so as a leader, when you know the sequence of 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 things like that, that first seen or heard is best remembered. You can be intentional and really maximize um, outcomes for what you're hoping for with your team. So on the first day of school, um, if the first day when teachers are back every year, I um, before I meet with them, I reflect on the things that matter most to me and I just list them out and I list out why. And I have that running list from year to year and it doesn't change much. Um, but as I grow, it changes, right? As we grow and really step into that more clear authenticity of who we are, then our, our, the things that matter to us become more clear. So I'll list those out. And then when I see teachers, the first thing we do is we go over, welcome, welcome to the new school year, welcome back or welcome to the team. Um, I am your leader and this is who I am. And these are the things that matter to me. And I am sharing them with you with full transparency because I want you to hold me accountable to being this leader. And I want you to know what matters to me. And when you're outside of these things, um, it could be a problem. And so I just go through. We treat everyone with dignity and respect. We come from a place of kindness. We don't gossip about others. If we have a problem with someone, we go directly to that person to work it out. If you need my support, I'm here to help. We're going to have the best teams are going to have um, 
you know, challenges. We're going to have, we're not going to always see it eye to eye. And if we're a high functioning team, we should be able to talk about that. And we should be able to talk about that with respect. Um, so, so I just go through everything that matters to me and why it matters to me. And then I share my commitment and, and I'll share it with you right now. My commitment is I've written it down and I, I, I would say that all of you need to, as leaders, write down your commitment and share it with your school community. I will give my personal best. I will be the positive change I wish wish to see. I will listen with my eyes, ears, and heart. I will smile. I will support. I will serve. I will look for the good in others. I will spend my time on solutions. I will be intentional about leading with purpose and passion. I will be a courageous, kind, and thoughtful leader who serves as an example of excellence. I will strive to bring out the best in others by leading with truth compassion, grace, integrity, and understanding. I will add value to the lives of others. I will make a meaningful difference. Wow. And so I share my commitment. And then I invite every staff member to write their own commitment statement. And we close out the morning with sharing those out loud with each other. And we do like we circle up and we look at the person that's speaking and we, I set the tone on to listen with respect. We will look at the speaker. We will think uplifting thoughts. We will look at them and listen with our eyes, our ears, and our heart. How do you listen with your heart? You are fully engaged and bringing them like uplifting energy so that, so that you hear everything they're saying and you then encourage them to be that person all year long. And we bring those commitments, um, commitment statements out regularly. Those are part of like when we get, you know, during the year, we um, we would read a couple of student commitment statements and staff commitment statements on morning announcements. Um, first seen or heard is best remembered. Let's start with a few of the commitment statements so that everybody every day knows this is who we are and this is how we're going to be when we're together at this school. There may be craziness happen outside of our school, but on this campus, this is how we're going to be. Um, and then in the middle of the year, we'll come back to those and we'll, we'll revisit them. I will print them out sometimes on, on, on certificates of excellence and then go deliver them to a room and do a spotlight, you know, staff member or a spotlight student based on what they said they were committed to doing um, so that we can encourage more of what we, what we want to see more of. Because what we focus on grows stronger in our schools. So we have got to be intentional about where we place our focus. We can focus on all the negativity and all the things that are wrong, or we can focus on what is right. And our staff um, had this um, point positive um, kayaker term. It's, um, it's a matter of life and death when you're on the river with kayakers. And so the lead kayaker points to the safe place to go. The leader in our schools needs to point to where we're going and often because what we focus on grows where we point, we go. So, yeah, I could talk about that all day, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but but and I think people would eat it up all day. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say two things before I move on. Um, number one, someone just asked me, do you have a, a, a book out on leadership? And, and I'll say this to you. Uh, Mary has four books. Um, and I'm going to talk about, we're going to talk about those toward the end. We're getting there. And, uh, so stay, stay tuned. I have one of them sitting right here, but we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but the other thing is, and I, I probably lost my train of thought on what, oh, I know what it was. A lot of you all are writing, um, um, this, I guess we say synonymous with amen, with the commitment statement, Right. But here, here's the thing. I want to I want to hold everyone's feet to the fire then. So if if the if the whole idea of the commitment statement is resonating with you, then all right, we're in November, we're going into December, we got the month, we're gonna get through December, but then we got a little break in between. So maybe you want to formulate with that during that break how you're gonna come back in January, the start of a brand new calendar year with the commitment statement idea. And, and, and just gear it toward you, your needs, your school's needs, et cetera, to make it work for you. Right. But <laughs> but but don't just watch the interview and, 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 and let the commitment statement idea resonate with you. But then you don't turn that corner. Right. 
and take it with you back to school. Someone might on here might say, forget January. I'm 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 gonna be ready next Monday, right? Whatever it is. But the point is virtual AP Leadership Academy, the purpose of this is to strengthen us, right? So make sure you take that information and incorporate it, fold it into your practice, make that a part of who you are, right? Great stuff. Let's 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 keep going, Mary. You know, um heart of a leader in the context of the learning environment. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about that school where there are in fact children who have to learn in environments that are not conducive to them learning at high levels. I'm thinking about those teachers who have to go to school and work and teach in environments that are not necessarily conducive to being able to perform at the highest level. When we talk about everything that you have articulated up to this point about the heart of a leader, what does it say about the heart of a leader if I've got children in that predicament, staff in that predicament, but yet I'm leading the school? How would you respond to that? Well, we do. We, you know, by the nature of being in, in our schools today, um, we have that in our schools. Um, I would say that we have work to do and that's why it's so important that we operate from, um, we understand our purpose and we clear out the clutter. And lately my, um, you know, every year is different and, and depends on, you know, what you're seeing. And so I'm very, um, in tune with, okay, I've been a leader for 25 years in the state of Alaska. Um, I have so many tools in my tool bag at this point, but I can't possibly use them all in one year. That's just too much. What do What is it that is needed now to maximize outcomes for kids, for students, for staff? How can we clear out the noise and um, be streamline our efforts to get the best results? Um, you know, it, it's kind of like I. it comes back to our, our football team won the state championship this year. It's Congrats. the first time in the school's history. We've been um, a school for over 30 years. It's the first time in our history that we won the state championship. And that to me is exciting. Um, but more exciting than winning the championship is what led up to winning the championship. And it was tons of adversity. It was Stu um, student athletes breaking bones during games, like the ambulance showing up in the game, the coach. Um, I'm looking at the heart of a leader, right? All the time. I'm like, do we have the right head coach? Do we have the right people at those top influential positions leading the way? And I fell in love with football this year because of what I saw happening. I've always been basketball because my kids have that. My kids are amazing in basketball, my own. Um, but football, I was just always kind of like, what is it about, you know, football that Americans love? And I learned this year that it was the story behind the team and how we got there. And so I want to tell you one thing that I'm just so proud of. And this is where if you are authentically who you are and leaning into what you lean into um, and, and doing the tough work, sometimes it feels hopeless. Sometimes it feels like we're not making a difference. Why do we even try? And when it comes to um, racism, that is something that feels hopeless at times. And even um, the students in my school, the minority students in our school, our, our black and brown students will tell me, Miss Fulp, why do you try? The, it doesn't help. It's people have tried for forever. And it, and, and there's, there's, it's just going to be, this is how it just is. And I'm like, I can't accept that answer. I have to believe that I can add, like, I can create positive change in this way, in this area. Otherwise I would just like have to give up. Like I have to know that my legacy is that my belief and my passion behind this being wrong and my actions will make a difference. And so this year on our football team, um, we had a student say the N word and with a hard R at the end towards another one of the athletes. And um, I got con th the student didn't do anything about it. He just kind of checked the the person for what they said. And then um, a friend jumped in and was like, don't talk like that. But there was no fights that broke out 
thankfully. Um, some people are, are like, no, you fight. If someone says that, you fight. And that's what the student was coming from. A dad who was like, if anyone ever does that to you because no one else can fix our problems for us, you have permission, son, to fight. Like, you stand up for yourself. You need to be a man and stand up for yourself. So this mom got a hold of me because we have a trusting relationship and she knows my heart because I'm very clear about who I am and what matters to me. And what matters to me that is that this that we end racism, that we end it, um, and that we contribute to ending it in a powerful way. And that's part of why I'm here. That's my calling. And so I got a hold, um, I, she got a hold of me that night and she said, my husband um, is about to show up and act a fool at the school because he is so angry. And I said, okay, will you talk to him and we'll take care of it first thing in the morning, submit the incident report and give me all the details. We brought that to the coach and the coach set the whole team down. And he said, the head coach said, if I hear of this word being used on, with, with those of you who are 130 young football players, young men, young football players in jerseys, he said, if you use that word in this program, you will not only be done for a year, you'll be done for four years. And if you're getting this from home, that this is okay, I will go and talk to your parents. We are not going to be known for this. And he handled it in such a dignified and um, uplifting manner that the whole team was inspired to be a part of that change that they knew was needed in our school community. I am, I was so like, so then after he shared that and then they lost a few big games, like they got their butts kicked and he went in and had a meeting and fired some of his captains. And then he's, and one of them was his son, who I believe is going to be the named the Gatorade player of the year. He actually mm -hmm. fired him because he wanted more out of his own son too. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end, they beat the team that, that, that just killed them during our homecoming. And then they beat the team for the championship game that, um, was, that was undefeated. And watching that story play itself out in that way, the football players started to be the ones who wiped the tables down in the cafeteria with rags. I loved getting behind that kind of service, that kind of leadership, that kind of change. When the head football coach and the principal are working together to hold kids accountable and to hold them to their best, um, you know, version of who they are, we can make the change that we need to make. And so that's the exciting part. It feels hopeless. And when kids tell you it's hopeless, but then they see that on the other side, they start to believe again in the things that we need to see more of in this world. I love it. It wasn't, it wasn't swept under the rug as it is in some places, but it was dealt with um by by the head coach and was willing to sacrifice wins in order to deal with yeah. the important situation you know as a sidebar for those of you that, that that caught me putting that spam on the uh page i was trying to block it and and hit the wrong button and highlighted it it's blocked now but every now and then the the spammers get in here um and and and, and i just have to move quickly to get it but in moving too quickly i hit the wrong button instead of blocking it i highlighted it right so um but we're good now um let's go so so you know mary uh there's a word that comes up on this platform i would think of the 134 weeks before today um i probably use this word every every session and 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 the word is why meaning purpose the slang is why the word is purpose and 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 in the context of heart of a leader because i'm, I'm staying mm -hmm. on that theme now heart of a leader is it possible in your estimation to to lead at a high level if one is devoid of a why of a sense of purpose for the work no i think um, it is anytime someone's lost their fire, they need to find their purpose. Um, I don't believe you can live to your true capacity unless you are living in your purpose. Mm. You know, I've heard from, you know, that they're, that the average human being only lives to 50% of their true capacity. And, and I, and I believe that I believe that that's true because, we get so worried about what people think and so busy and so distracted and, and defeated. And sometimes like, sometimes I find myself with that inner dialogue of, am I doing enough? Am I enough? Am I 
am I making the kind of difference that I need to make? Because it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't feel like it. Sometimes you're in the middle of a storm and it is dark and messy and, and disappointing. Um, and so if you don't have your why, the storm will, will take you completely off course. But if you know who you are to the core of who you are, nothing that comes against you will stand. Nothing. So the more rooted in who you are and your purpose has to be something greater than yourself. And when your purpose is aligned with something greater than yourself, based on who you are and what who you have been called to be, then all of that darkness and noise and and stuff coming against you, yeah, it'll it'll hit you. It'll hurt sometimes. It may knock you down, but you won't stay down if you know your why and you are living in your true authentic um, space of who of who you are. And so I, it it one of my purposes is in life is to help people find their why. Mm. I help young people find their why all the time. If people don't know their why, we're in trouble. I think that's a lot of what's going on in the world is people don't know their why, they don't know their purpose, they're living defeated and and as victims, yes, we need to know our why. Got it. You know, I told you, oh, I, I told you that um, I became a principal because I wanted teachers, great teachers to be supported in being at their best. And I had, um, you know, sometimes you go, okay, is that purpose of why I chose to be a principal, is it walking itself out well in who I am? And the answer to that was, has been yes over and over again, but really a yes when a teacher wrote a book, When All Else Fails, Reasons Why I Stay in the Classroom and How You Can Find Your Why. And she asked me to write the foreword because she, I'm the principal that she judges all principals by. And so this is her book. Um, I don't know. You can't really see it there. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, on the back of it, she has um, my my um she put on the back my um forward because she just really values my leadership and so what an honor to be someone who people point to as being especially she's been a teacher of the year twice for two different uh, two different times and so when the teachers of the year um feel supported by the principal of the year and they feel like they can be at their best then boy do we are we doing the right work and she wrote that book why i choose to stay in the profession because she was seeing all of these article articles about why people are choosing to leave yeah. and i too believe that leaders are leaving and because this work is so hard right now it feels overwhelming i feel overwhelmed and i'm equipped and so what i would say to anyone who feels overwhelmed we need you. We need the best to stay in the profession. And we need you to get some of those things off your plate that are making you feel like you can't do this work. Um, if you know your why, walk in your why every day. It feels impossible. And yes, there's too much for any one of us to do, but collectively, we can do this. Woo, that's some strong stuff there. And I, you know, I, I particularly like when you when you talked about the why aligned to something greater than yourself, right? Yeah. And, and and every now and then we need to hear that because it's easy to get caught up into ourselves and forgetting yeah. about the bigger picture and how we impact others. And and as we impact others, it impacts us in the process. So so I'll say to somebody out there, I'm talking to assistant principals. I'm talking to principals. Make sure your why is more than just you, mm -hmm. right? But it's about every youngster in that building. It's about every staff member in that building. It's not just you. You're, you're, you're just a part of that overall collective. You know, um, and I'm, I'm going to keep moving I, I, because I got a few more and, and I see the time. So um, where am I at here? Here we go. You know, uh, Mary, in, in any given school, I believe there, there's a young person who is asking the following five questions, I could list a lot more, but I want to just confine it to these five. But asking these five questions without actually asking anybody these questions. So it's just within oneself. Am I welcome here? Do I belong here? Am I somebody here? 
Do you care about me, teacher? Do I matter to you, teacher? So as I consider all the conversation we've been having about the heart of a leader, how do we decrease the possibility that this reality of, a, of, of this particular student in our building actually exists? How do we ensure, what can we do that we decrease the probability because it's, 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 it's a big ask, but decrease the probability that that I'm, I don't have students in my building questioning whether or not they belong, question whether or not they're welcome, question whether or not that there's somebody, question whether or not that anyone cares about me, question whether or not I matter. Speak to us through the, through the lens of the heart of a leader. Oh, that's so important. That's that's a that's at the heart of who I am as a leader. Um, I position myself. I have a um, a desk, a mobile desk, and I move it out. Um, and as I welcome students every morning, and I play music, I you know try to play uplifting music and welcome students and truly see them and and look into their eyes as they come in the building. Um, it's important that we know their names and and something uniquely wonderful about them. I ask three questions of every student in in our school. This is this is my first year as a new principal at the high school, but prior to this year, um, this has been a pattern of what I've done every year. Um, we ask, I ask these three questions, and then this is part of the student commitment statement that we read on morning announcements every day. Um, who are you when you're at your very best? What is one thing uniquely wonderful about you? And what are you committed to doing to add value to our school this year based on the gift of who you are? Mm. When we know our students and they know that we see them and, and there are, there are things that you have to do as a leader to really, truly see your students. And because we have a lot of students at the, the high school I'm at now, there's 1100 students at the middle school I was at for 15 years. There were 800, seven to 800 students, um, you know, during COVID less than that, but um, they're back. And, and, and they're needy and they, these kids have significant needs. And so they need us to know their name. They need us to see them. I asked Life Touch. This is something you can do as a principal. Um, whoever does your yearbook photos, Life Touch does ours. And I know the um, people who, who work directly like the top leaders. And I said, I need a photo of every student in our school. I need it for myself. And then I bring all of the photos of all the students in our school to a staff meeting. And then I have staff members. If you know this kid and you care about them, you have a connection with them, put your initials on the back of, and go through as many photos as you can. And then anyone who doesn't have any initials, we have staff members adopt that child. Like you take this photo back to your classroom. If you have them th during the day, this is your student. They're not going to know that we chose them, but they're going to know because they're seen and they're valued and they have someone looking out for them. They have someone checking in with them. And this teacher who wrote this book said that was one of the things that she did is she took that student's photo back with her to her classroom. And she said to this day, so many years later, she is still keeping track of that student and their success. Wow. Wow. That matters. And that's, you know, that's that's commitment. Right there, when you when 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 you make that decision, I'm going I'm going to follow this student all the way through. That's mm -hmm. good stuff. I got two more for you. Okay, two more to go. Um, let's talk equity a little bit. A word that has become so controversial across mm -hmm. America, in different parts of America, but as I contend on this platform so often, and 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 in my work in the world so often, I gave equity a definition when I when I wrote. This book, The Equity and Social Justice Education 50, I said, here, I'm, I'm defining it this way, and I'm going to stand on this. Meeting young people or meeting the learners or meeting the scholars or meeting the children where they are, dot, 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 as they are. So I always ask folks, where, where's the controversy, right? We, we, we're going to meet them where they are as they are. That's just great teaching. That's mm -hmm. just great humanity, meeting young people where they are as they are. So, so, so with that, thinking about that definition from the, from the lens of the heart of a leader, what might equity look like through that lens where 
those students happen to be your students or you speaking for somebody in our audience or, or for anybody, what does it look like in terms of the equity lens when we talk about the heart of a leader? You know, um, it's so it's so important to me that we um, come from a place of uh, of truly wanting to understand a student and where they are without judgment. Yeah. Everyone has a life story that leads them to be where they are today. And so I encourage all of us to ask, I wonder what it is about this person's life story that leads them to be where they are today. And how can I influence them to continue to move to a better place? I mean, and that's, we need to know where they are. We need to understand who they are and why, why they are where they are. Like, I mean, understand life stories. We're all different and we all have things that, that influence our thinking and influence the way that we see others. Um, we've, when we deal with, you know, I've had this huge transgender bathroom situation come up in our school at the very start of this year. And, and I have um, people who have very strong beliefs on both sides of that issue. Mm -hmm. And so as a leader, I had to go, okay, whoa, how do I handle this? Well, how am I um, going to be who I am and walk this out? Well, you know, I had to listen. I had to say to every parent and every person who comes to me um, that I am committed to giving your child the best of what we have to off offer. Mm -hmm. And the moment they step on campus, they are going to be safe, supported, and cared for. And, and therefore, we have to set things up on campus to where we have diverse thoughts, diverse beliefs, but we treat everyone with human with dignity and respect. We, um, I tell students, I will stop and go in and meet with all the students and say, there is not one person that is better than anyone else in this room based on who we are as human beings. I have a different title. I have more responsibility. Some of us are making better choices than others, but there is not one person based on who we are as humans that is better than anyone else. And so therefore, we are going to listen to each other. We're going to support each other. We're going to get out of judgment and into curiosity. We are going to really take care of each other on this campus. And then I say, how cool would it be that we have all of these, you know, polarizing beliefs and politics that are really imp impacting us in this environment? How cool would it be that parents show up to an event and they see all of these wonderful, unique, awesome young people together cheering for like the football game or they're, you know, super fanning for the big event or we're showing up to the music event and supporting our, our musicians. How cool would it be that they go, wow, what is it about this group of kids that they're just this amazing um, reflection of what we want to see more of in our country and in our community? That would be, um, to me, if we can get in a place of seeing people where they're at and helping them get from the place they are to the place they want to go. So one of the things um, that I do, I'll just, I know you're, we're running out of time, but when someone gets suspended, there are times when someone has to get suspended because of safety reasons, drugs on campus, fighting on campus. One of the consequences is a suspension. But every time someone's suspended for out of school, we do a one day in school for a reset. And during that one day in school, I always get a conversation with that student. And I have this restorative um, conversation and assignment for them to complete that I send out to all of their teachers and their parents. And it's a way to show us that we're going to call out the best in this uh, person who's made a mistake. The questions on the assignment are, who are you when you're at your very best? What is one thing uniquely wonderful about you? What do you need from us to be at your best this year? Which adult at this school do you feel most connected to? Who cares about you and how do you know? What are you going to do to make this school a better school for everyone? And what are you committed to doing as you go back to class today? And then there's a list of things that people of integrity possess. 
of 13 things that people of integrity possess. And I say, pick three or more that you're going to focus on working on for yourself as you go back to class. And then I send their answers out to everyone so that when this young person comes back after making that mistake, we see them and support them being at their very best. Wow. Wow. That's just, just like the commitment statement. Now there, there's, there's something else folks. And, and, and I gotta, I gotta, I keep putting this back up. Uh, Mary, uh, Mary Tate said, I'll, I'll be watching this again and again and again. This is, this is our affirming assignment foundation to keep the faith. But then there, there's, there's another one that, that, that I, I, I wish I could find. Oh, here it is. She said, Pauline said, hands down, this is one of the best interviews. I'm, I'm encouraged to continue in this work as my authentic self. Thank you. And, 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 you know, and, and these are not the only two. There's, yeah. there's a lot of that. And, and, and I love it because, you know, I've brought on some very popular people, mm -hmm. people who are out here, you know, doing all that travel that I do like that. But then it's, it's, like like Yolanda's using a Yolanda McKinney's using a term it, it, with, with this slang with, with, where we say it hits different, and it, it hits different when you get that kind of response to someone who's on the front lines, as mm -hmm. opposed to those of us who used to be right, who are now flying around. So when you when you got somebody who's still in the trenches on the front line doing this work, and the people say to you, "I needed this." I, I, this is resonating with me. This is the best I've heard. You know, that type of thing. That makes me feel Yay. that this platform matters in bringing mm -hmm. someone like you on here. It matters. Mm -hmm. So I got one more for you. One more. Yes, uh, Mary is an author. But someone asked about leadership. And I guess it, it's open to the way you interpret the word leader. Mary writes devotional books. This is this is um, one of them. This is not the newest one. This is the one she sent me an autograph for me. It's called Lifted. It's a devotional. And she's very spiritual. So she's got four books in there. It's a little thick. She's got four of these on Amazon. Right. And it's, you know, different titles, obviously. And then there's 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 some words on the back as well. But you can go to Amazon and and, and get this book. But I wanted her to talk about it. I, you know, and, and what I wanted to say to you, Mary, and let me, let me just look at my note here. Um, with you writing the devotional books, um, and I know someone was asking you about the leadership books. My, my, my question to you is what is the motivation for this type of writing? Because a lot of folks who are in the, in the business of leadership, like you and I and all these folks on the thread and, and who are not on the thread, because I always got to remember there are folks that don't post. They, the ones of us who write are typically writing leadership or writing about the classroom. And here you, you, you've done something a little bit different. What's the motivation for a book of this nature? And how does your content, your genre impact your overall leadership? Wow. So I have another one um, here called Jesus Heals. Um, and I actually was originally writing a book on leadership. Um, it was it was called Unleash Your Leadership Presence. And I had several chapters written. I actually reviewed them today before I got on with you because there's so much there that does need to be published. Okay. And um, instead of and then all of a sudden, as I'm writing the book, I kind of have this writer's block. And I had a life, you know, my life experiences interrupted what I was doing. And my oldest son was really in a place of her challenge. And he was um, playing basketball in college, um, not quite where he wanted to be. And, and then all of a sudden he walked away from a $30,000 uh, scholarship. And I saw him, you know, being in this really dark place. And so um, to reach him and my other kids, I wrote those messages to my three kids every morning. And originally I wasn't going to publish it, but one of our teachers who has cancer, um, I would every once in a while send a message to him that I wrote to my kids. And he said, where are you? Can you send me all of these messages? Like I want all of them. And then all of a sudden one thing led to another and I published Lifted. And in Lifted, the reason it's so thick is that I have a reflection page for everyone who's um, engaging with my work is it's about pointing them back to that authentic place. So these books really are about um, 
helping people get to the root of who they are in who they were created to be and living their best life. Um, and so the next book that I'm going to write, though, I believe the title, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of writing it. It's not Unleash Your Leadership Presence anymore, but it's um, Fiercely Authentic, The Heart of a Leader. That's wow. going to be the title of my book. Wow. And um, what's so cool about that is when you were up doing the Leadership Summit in Alaska, Principal Cafele, um, all of your books were on the table and someone came up and saw your green um, book, the the teacher, uh, 50 critical questions. And they said, M Mary, is this your book? And I said, no, I haven't like published anything yet. Um, but people speak that into you, right? They go, sure. when are you going to write that book? When are, you know, I need to read your book. And I've been saying that to other people who have something to offer us. I mean, we have a principal, Cecily Williams, who went to your presentation, the Leadership Summit, and she's a retired principal and she is a legend around here. And I'm just like, you need to write your book because I want to read it. I have, I'm going to grow when I read and, and surround myself with the people who are doing the right work. So um, I don't sell these personally. Um, they, they're on, they are on Amazon. So if you buy it on Amazon, it's sold. I don't do these ones to make money. Um, uh, God has put it on my heart that they are to be gifted to others. And so I um, mail these out and hand them out all the time to anyone who wants a copy and just wants um, to stay connected. Because when you have a, pr a powerful um, anointing, which I believe I have a powerful anointing, and so do you, Mr. Cafe uh, Principal Cafele, we don't have time to talk to everyone who wants to talk to us all day long, every day. Yeah. Um, be because we just don't. So this is my way to talk to people um, is I send and love people well is I send them copies of my devotionals and then they feel like they have me because these are very intimate. Um, I pray there's prayers in them. They're just, it's a way for people to be connected to me, but also connected to, to the source of who, you know, who created them and, and what they're, who they're called to be. And I'm not trying to push my faith on anyone. I'm just trying to live authentically in who I am so that even if someone's an atheist on this um, platform today, I love you. Awesome. Like, like I'm, I'm just here to be me. I'm here to encourage you to be the best you possible. I don't, you know, like my beliefs are my beliefs, your beliefs are your beliefs. I wonder what it is about our, your life story that leads you to where you are. I know what it is about my life story that has led me to be where I am. And it's been through a lot of suffering, a lot of brokenness that has led me to come to this level of wholeness in my life. Wow. All I could say is I love this freaking platform. Because I... <laughs> Because it brings people like you. <laughs> hey, hey, Mary, let's go through these BAM questions. Ugh. These BAM impact questions. 21 questions. One word answer or one sentence. Whatever is best. Just try not to go over the sentence. Here we go. Is education on the right path for underserved children? This morning, in this conversation with you and the others you've had on here, I would say yes, but collectively across the nation, no. Can true equity occur in America's schools for Black, Brown, and other underserved students? It is possible, but we have a lot of work to do. Does Mary Teresa Fulp's work contribute to the progress we desperately need? Yes. If you could do a reset on your life, would your line of work be different or the same? The same. Why do you continue to do this work? Because I love it. What fires you up within the work that you do? The people that I serve. What do you love about the work that you do? Influencing people to be at their best and believe in the gift of who they are. What do you dislike about the work that you do? Negative, toxic people who are destructive to the progress. Mm. What has been your greatest victory in this work? Man. 
there's so many things that I could say. I would just say that my greatest victory is that that my students from when I started 25 years ago, many of them are still in touch with me today. Wow, good stuff. What has been your greatest mistake in this work? Seeing what I need, no needs to happen and skipping the process without including everyone in the conversations that needs to be a part of the progress. Mm. What's been your greatest challenge in this work? Mediocrity, people who would who are who are comfortable staying the same. Are you proud of your first year as an assistant principal? I've never been an assistant principal, but I'm proud of my first year as a principal. All right, which was the next question. Yeah. So, all right. So who inspires you in this work? People like you, um, people who who are living in their authentic um, purpose which you absolutely are. So absolutely you and others who are, you know, showing up and giving their best. I appreciate you. What are you reading now? Book, blog, article, anything? I am reading Love Works at Seven Principles. And then this one ah. is the one that <laughs> is my school a better school because I lead it. I always ask teachers, is our school a better school because you're here? Is our school a better school because of this? Everyone should be able to answer yes. If the answer is no, we have work to do. I love it. I appreciate you immensely. Um, what book would you recommend for our viewers this morning, this afternoon? Now? Is my school a better school because I lead it or any of the books you've written? Absolutely. <laughs> I appreciate you immensely. What do you want to accomplish that you haven't accomplished yet? Influencing and impacting more people um, with the the legacy work that I've been called to do. Are you satisfied with where you are right now professionally? Yes. And always a little ready for more. Yeah. What could you say to a viewer out there who continues to face closed doors? Persevere. Keep putting one step in front of the other and persevere. What could you say to a viewer out there who's lost their fire? Find your why. Get around the right people. Pay attention to what you're thinking about and who you're spending time with. And finally, if Mary Teresa Falk was a word in a dictionary, what would be your definition? Authentic. Authentic. That's the obvious one. Authentic. <laughs> hey, Mary. Principal Folk, I appreciate you. This was dynamite. This was extraordinary. Hey, folks on the call, those of you who have been with me for at least a week, you know how we do this. If you enjoyed the presentation, if you benefited from it, if you got something out of it, give us some emojis. Give us whatever your favorite emoji is, the hearts, the bombs, the fire, the, the 100s, the, the whatever, the, the praise. I see it. I see it. I see it. Oh, man, it's coming. It's Thank coming. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Hey, hey Mary, how can they get in touch with you if they want to continue this conversation, um, social media, that type of thing? Uh, Mary Teresa Fulp on Facebook, um, Colony at Colony Principal on Twitter. Um, I can Mary Teresa Fulp.com or my email mtfulp at yahoo.com. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. So reach out. And then again, the books right on Amazon. Put in Mary Teresa Fulp and they'll, all, the, all four of the books will just pop up. Good stuff. And as I always do, when we have a great presentation, <laughs> got to get the bat out. You hit a grand slam, four Yay. runs in Josh Gibson style, 800 homers. Oh, man. Great stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. Folks, let me let me let me um say to you, thanks for being here as always. Oh, I see my brother, Dr. DeLacy Davis in the building. Now, hey, DeLacy, I forgot the D, man. It's important, Dr. DeLacy D Davis, right? <laughs> Gotta get that D in there. Hey, um, folks, Mary, stay with me as I run down when I go off camera so we can talk. But folks, uh, thanks for being here as always. This was another great Saturday, 135. Next Saturday, 136, first Saturday of the month, I'm going solo. 
So I know you I, I know I said I'm traveling, but you I'll be on. So um solo Saturday next week. Check it out. We're gonna do part three of um navigating AP. How how do I word that? Navigating assistant principal leadership frustration, discouragement, and disappointment. This will be part three, and then I'm gonna give y'all part four and five and all that like way later. Cause this will be my last solo Saturday until at least May, if not June. Cause I, I, I got, I just got guests that I want on here and I, you know, I'll get my solo words in during my commentary before we get started. But I want to, I want to get these guests in here and, um, and cause I, I got so many, I just got so many great people like Mary that I want to bring on. So folks, uh, before you leave, make sure every Saturday morning, 10 o'clock Facebook live, Principal Sean Hurt, followed by, as I call them, the two doctors. That's Dr. Sheikah Houston and Dr. Tammy Taylor, 1030 on Saturdays with Create and Educate. Then Sunday night, Principal Josh Tovar, Principal Dean Packard would unlock the middle at seven o'clock. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the Village Leadership Group with Dr. Roz Gaskins, who will be my guest at some point later, and Coach Williams. Make sure you pick up the assistant principal 50 and the aspiring principal 50, along with my newest one, the equity and social justice education 50. Visit principalcafele.com. Once again, principalcafele.com. I got a bunch of, oh man, a bunch, a whole lot of, of podcast interviews. Um, and I got to put some more up that I haven't, I just haven't been posting them lately. Um, blog posts from my blog site and then blogs that I've written for other people. And just, just a whole lot of resources there. And, of course, you can get my books on the site as well. Um, where are we at here? Subscribe to the Virtual AP Leadership Academy YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. We, You know, I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm elated by the number of followers we have on there or subscribers. We got 16.6 thousand uh, uh, subscribers on that channel. But I want to get it up to 20, y'all. So tell a friend, subscribe to the Virtual AP Leadership Academy um, YouTube channel. Let's bring that up to 20,000 uh, subscribers. And then like and follow the Virtual AP Leadership Academy Facebook page. You know, I'm supposed to write the commentary every Sunday, but I've missed the past two Sundays. I suspect I'm going to miss tomorrow because, you know, I, I got to pack and all that. <laughs> we'll, we'll get that going again in December, right? So we get that going again. But, you, but, but there's 80 some odd essays. You tell me you read all 80. <laughs> <laughs> where's that person on here that says but i read all as a matter of fact it's 88 or 89 where's that one put it in the thread if you honestly read all 89 of those commentaries right so so if i miss a week or two it's not a big deal scroll down on my facebook page virtual ap leadership academy facebook page and check those out. See, I, ain't, I don't see nobody saying I read all 88, 89, whatever that number is. Wait a minute. Yolanda said, that's me. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yolanda. <laughs> she could say we got work to do. Right? So so now I don't feel as bad that I'm not writing one tomorrow because y'all ain't reading them anyway. Right. So read that commentary, man. Now, uh oh, Charlena Hottie said I read every one. Wow. Wanda McKinney said, been rocking, right? So <laughs> Cora Gray said, challenge accepted, right? So yeah, go back to that. Page. All you got to do is scroll and you'll see them all, man. You'll see them all. So now I don't feel guilty, right? <laughs> so look here, y'all. Make sure you're taking care of that diet, getting that exercise in. Had that stress mm -hmm. test last week, man. And let me tell you all this real quick before you leave. Check this out. They put me on the treadmill. You know, I had the heart attack, so I got to go through this stuff. They put me on the treadmill and, you know, the average person, you know, they put it on a slow speed just so they can measure your heart rate compared to their target. And, and you know, I'm in shape, y'all. So they had to speed that thing up, speed that thing up, speed it up some more. Mm -hmm. Then they inclined it, right? <laughs> and they, <laughs> Then they inclined it some more. I'm like, yo. And I said that where I said, yo, like, like. When y'all going to stop, right? I'm getting real tight. They say, yeah, you in shape. You, you're you not hitting the target because you you, you you don't have that. Your, your, your heart is not beating quick enough for us to stop it because you're in shape. So I said, so you telling me all these older cats that come in here, and I use that word, these older cats that come in here, you speed it up like that for them? No, no, they don't. They're not in it. You're obviously taking care of yourself. 
once I'm on that thing, I'm working harder at the stress test than I do in the gym. But 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 the bottom line is that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. That means I'm doing the right thing. I'm taking care of myself. Right. So make sure you taking care of you. She could said, all right, now that's right. Cause she could know because she's on that treadmill every day. So make sure you're taking care of yourselves, folks. Other than that, I hope your your your, your Thanksgiving was great. Your Thanksgiving uh, weekend, it continues to be great. Those of you who are the football fans, and you know that Michigan and Ohio State are playing right now, but you saw it not robbery to stay with me, then I, I thank you for that. Those of you that said, I got to watch this game because this is an important game, then I can dig it, right? But um, look here, y'all. Appreciate you. So I'll see you next Saturday at the same time, 1055 Eastern Time. Have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Yay. Peace. Thumbs up. <laughs> Cock that fist back. One, two, three. Bam! Have a great week, y'all. I'll see you next Saturday. Stay safe. Stay with me, Mary.